that time again. Five teams compete to get into the main event, the Junkyard Jest. Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Aaron Yonda. We've got 24 new cars here for you and one familiar face from season one. Let's take a look at our competitors. Team number one is Massive Transit. What's interesting about this team is that they're bigger, but they're also smaller. Each one of these vehicles is actually about a third smaller than your regular Junkyard Jazz competitor. And while they may be smaller, they are not lighter. Look at the weight on this stretch limo. 106 grams, and it's super long. That is going to be interesting to see on the track. And then we've got the articulated bus at 74 grams. That's basically two buses. Also got the UBE Industries double trailer. That thing is 145 grams. The transporter at 83 grams. And Mini Bago. Not quite as scary as the Winnebago, but it still packs a punch. Next up, we've got the Webmasters. If you don't like spiders, you're going to want to stay away from this team. With the Street Creeper, sponsored by Nathan and Julie Richardson. Arachno Rod, sponsored by Hey Steve Productions. Black Widow, sponsored by Sean and Patrick Hogan. The Speed Spider, sponsored by Judy Collins. And of course, Spider-Man, sponsored by Miss Sherry's Good Soap on Etsy. Joustin Jalopies. Look at these classic cars. First up, I think you'll recognize, this is the car that was able to deal with the creature from the Black Lagoon menace, Pink Caddy, sponsored by Woeful Fiber Art. The 56 Chevy Bel Air, sponsored by Emo Dingo. Does that car even run? Christine from the movie, sponsored by Tony's Video Palace. The 55 Chevy Bel Air, sponsored by Chome, the spice must flow. And the Woody Surf Wagon, sponsored by Too Cheap For You, Joey Gold. The Caped Cruisers. Wow, that is a slick looking team. Looks like we've got a couple of superheroes on that team as well. Starting with Cloak and Dagger, sponsored by the Birmingham Cardboard Slingers. Ground Effects, sponsored by Swedenborg Smorgasbord. Feeling your day on a sandwich and a dream. The Bishop, sponsored by Whalen Enterprises International. Here's the Car of Steel, Superman. And his buddy, Aquaman. Sponsored by Brendan Walsh. Next up is Shining Steel, sponsored by Smith Casey's Garage 112 Tranquility Lane. With Iron Man. The Corvette Stingray. Dodge Super 8 Hemi. Etorium. And Eraserhead. Those are your teams. It's time to hit the junkyard and have some fun. Every team sends down one car at a time. We'll be starting off with the Webmasters and Street Creeper. As Street Creeper takes his place, I'd like to draw your attention to the new height bar that's just been installed in the junkyard. Sometimes our competitors do get some serious height when they go down the track, and we thought it'd be fun to find out exactly how high they're going. And of course, it goes all the way to 11. Up first for the jalopies, it's the most jalopy of them all, the 56 Bel Air. It looks like pieces might fall off of this thing when it goes down the track. Let's see what happens. And it's a little slow, but it does manage to get down the track. Mm, doesn't look like anything fell off yet. Let's see what happens when the Stingray goes down and hits it for Shining Steel. The Stingray smashes the back of that car real good, and it does look like we've already lost a piece. Probably of the bumper, could be a taillight. Not exactly sure. Uh, it definitely looks like it's probably part of the bumper. Kind of flops off there and lands on the side. Street Creeper is uh, safe on the side as well. Here comes the transporter for massive transit. This thing could be trouble. The transporter smashes the back of the stingray and pushes that jalopy sideways, I think. That's the same piece of bumper that it already lost, unless it just lost another section of bumper. I have no idea, that thing is trashed. Up first for the cruisers, it's the Bishop. This car could have some undercutting ability, I think. Oh my gosh! That thing just went flying. I think we might have just reached 11. I do believe so. The shell, the top of the car, just blows off and lands on the side of the track. Goes probably all the way to 11. Now you've got an interesting situation with the back of that car. It could actually be a jump for other cars. Let's find out when the Speed Spider hits the track. Speed Spider does indeed go off the back of it, but also pushes it underneath the transporter. And then the Speed Spider lands safely. The Bishop is almost a double threat. It's an undercutter and it's got a low back. And now Christine is up for the jalopies. That's a scary looking car, isn't it? Pretty heavy car and it pushes the transporter completely off the track. Moves the Bishop up a little closer to the jalopy. Shining Steel are gonna send down a Torium. This is an unusual looking car. Etorium destroys Christine. 
upside down and the transporter is almost sideways. That is precarious. Let's see what happens when the articulated bus hits them all. And the bus routes the bishop off the track, but he's still sitting pretty right side up. But now the bus is in a little bit of trouble, kind of dangerously teetering in the side of the track. And it's about to take a hit from Superman for caped cruisers. Superman pushes the bus forward, and actually to relative safely, the jalopy's starting to come off the track now, and Superman slots in nicely. Arachnorod is up for the webmasters. Arachnorod flips Superman completely upside down, and the Bel Air is upside down now too. Superman couldn't save either of them, unfortunately. That was a big hit from Arachnorod, possibly eliminated two vehicles. And now the Woody Surf Wagon is up for the jalopies. Looks like this guy's already been in an accident. He's missing his front bumper. And he plants himself squarely on the track by removing Arachnorod completely, sending him upside down making him spin around in the air a couple times before he finally landed. And now we've got Eraser Head from Shining Steel. Eraser Head just flips right over on the back of the wagon and is done. The Woody Wagon is just too heavy and he's not able to stay on the track at all. And now it's time for Mini Bago. Mini Bago's not quite as fearsome as Winnie Bago, but let's see what he's got. Mini Bago assassinates Eraser Head just tosses him into the crates, and he lands upside down. But now Mini Bago is sideways. Now here's a car with some definite undercutting power. It's ground effects for the Cape Cruiser. Ground effects puts Mini Bago out of commission over on the side. There is a chance he could get righted again, but it's not looking super likely. And now we've got Black Widow for the Webmasters. Black Widow sneaks right under ground effects and puts him over right next to Mini Bago. Black Widow's got a low front. Ground effects had a low back, but that front was even lower. And now it's time for the Pink Caddy, formerly of Pink Push. Pink Caddy almost puts the Woody Wagon upside down, but luckily it's too heavy to quite go over and be taken out by his own team member. That was a close one. Now here's another superhero. It's Iron Man for Shining Steel. Iron Man cannot do anything to the Pink Caddy. He kind of limps in there. It's a pretty light car, unfortunately, and you couldn't really get anything to happen. Here, though, is the opposite of a light car. It's the UBE Industrial Trailer, and it is the heaviest vehicle of today. And he proves it by taking out the Pink Caddy and Iron Man in one fell swoop. That was such a hit. Look at those cars get pushed off. Evil Weevil even gets moved up way up there in the front. Both of those cars are probably out. That was devastating. The power and the weight of that massive transit vehicle. And now he's got a low back too. He's gonna be hard to get off the track. But Cloak and Dagger is gonna give it his best. Cloak and Dagger smacks into the back and doesn't do anything. He just pops up onto the rails and waits for potential doom from Spider-Man. Let's see if Spider-Man can make something happen here. Spider-Man sends Cloak and Dagger almost upside down, but can't quite take him out. But Spider-Man does manage to stay on the track. I wonder if he had to use any webbing to stick there. And now we've got the 55 Bel Air for the Jalopies. The Bel Air cannot move Spider-Man. He really is kind of stuck to the track. So nothing happening there. Now going down for Shining Steel, it's the Dodge Super 8. The Dodge can't get anything to happen either. A little pushing, but can't make anyone get off the track. We're getting a nice line of cars here. However, I think that line is about to go away because Massive Transit is going to send down another big boy. It's the Escalade, and the Escalade just took out three cars. The Dodge goes flying upside down. Spider-Man gets turned upside down on top of the UBE and then falls flat upside down. The only one who survived that was the Bel Air who flops right side up. The single survivor of that cataclysmic collision. And now that Escalade is lined up behind the double trailer, I don't think they're gonna be going anywhere anytime soon. Let's see what Aquaman can do for the caped cruisers. Aquaman just rebounds off the back of the Escalade. He can't get anything to happen, backs way up off the track, but Aquaman does manage to survive for another round. That was the final car of round one, and we've got some wreckage here. 13 cars were eliminated. Let's take a look at who survived. Caped Cruisers, Massive Transit, and the Webmaster are all doing pretty good with only two cars lost each. 
Jousting Jalopy has lost three, and Shining Steel is in danger here. They only have one car left. Taking a look at the scoreboards, we've got a three-way tie for first. There are no teams with four or five cars left, and that's something we probably haven't seen, I don't think, in these qualifying matches. So this is going to be interesting. The Webmasters are going to start us off in round two with the Street Creeper yet again. Street Creeper takes its place on the track. Worked well last time, so why not do it again? And here comes the articulated bus. Very verbose, this bus. Oh, just takes it to Evil Weevil. Evil Weevil pushed off the track inconsequentially, and that bus has taken its place on the track. Gonna be hard to get that off of there, but maybe, just maybe, Quilk and Dagger will be able to do it. Didn't get that dagger under, he cannot do it. Almost takes himself off the track. That is a bad position for Cloak and Dagger. Could be a problem for him, depending on what the Woody Wagon does here. Big hit from the wagon. Oh, just crunches that car, pushes up his own hood, and pushes him off the track, almost off the track, but he's not safe yet. And here comes the Corvette for Shining Steel. It is Shining Steel's last hope, that car. And the Corvette crunches into the back of the Woody Wagon. Now it looks to me like something came off there. Maybe a tail light off the back of the Woody Wagon. These jalopies are losing pieces left and right. It's time for the Black Widow. Black Widow, oh boy, that's the end for Shining Steel, I'm thinking. I don't think there's any way the Corvette's gonna recover from that. Black Widow has just removed Shining Steel from this competition. The UBE double trailer's up next. Oh boy, here we go. UBE, wow! Black Widow is tossed unceremoniously off the track. Oh, he reached almost a level five there, if I'm not mistaken. And the Woody Wagon, what a recovery. Heavy car manages to come right back over and survive that. Keeping the Justin Jalopy's hopes alive in this competition. I didn't want to lose one of their two remaining cars. Aquaman's gonna take the dive next for the caped cruisers. Aquaman again cannot do anything to the back of that double trailer. And I don't know that anybody's gonna be able to make the bus and the UBE move off this track. They are just planted there. And now the 55 Bel Air for the Jalopies. The 55 Bel Air just savages Aquaman, sends him upside down, bouncing around. And he is down. Tough break for the cruisers there. Next up, Speed Spider. And that spider can't do anything. That line of cars is so dense. There's no way to move anyone off of it right now. Or is there? Because the Escalade is coming down. And you know something's got to give. Oh, this is going to be rough. And it was for the Jalopy, who is tossed off to the right and cannot make a recovery this time, but the Speed Spider, very adept at recovering and lands on his feet ultimately. And now it's time for the Bishop. The Bishop hits the Escalade and his carapace goes flying up into the air. I'm thinking probably about a five height-wise. And that is gonna end round two. Round two aftermath. We've got caped cruisers with two remaining cars. Joust and Jalopies are down to just the Woody and Massive Transit still have three left. Webmasters are hanging in there with two. Shining Steel are out of this match. Taking a gander at the scoreboards, Massive Transit has nine and caped cruisers and Webmasters are right behind with seven points apiece. And Massive Transit's gonna be starting us off this time around with the Articulated Bus. Articulated Bus takes its place on the track. Hard to get these cars off of the track. If you get them off though, I think you're gonna have an easier time dealing with them. Let's see if the Bishop can do it. And not surprisingly, the Bishop loses the top half of its car. Oh, we got up to a, about a, almost a seven on that one, I think. The Bishop consistently loses the top of its car, but it's kind of a secret weapon because what's left is a great car for getting underneath the ones in front and making the ones behind go off the back. So it's pretty clever overall. Speed Spider. Speed Spider does go right off the back. That was an arcing jump and and he lands it, and just like a spider, he crawls into the corner as far away from everyone else as he can get. It's time for the Woody Surf Wagon with surfboards in the back. The Woody Wagon pushes the Bishop almost off the track, but also partially underneath that double bus. And now because the Cadillac Escalade is coming down, we are going to see some devastation. And there it is. 
The Bishop's undercarriage is tossed over by the top part of his car, and the Escalade pushes his own teammate, the bus, off the track sideways. And take a look at what happens to the Woody's bumper on this. It's completely knocked off the car and just broken. Basically reduced to chunks. I don't know if they'll be able to get that back on there for the next run or not. In the meantime, Cloak and Dagger gets a shot at that Escalade. Let's see if he can do anything. Nothing happening there. Just bounces off the back of the Escalade. And we got a nice line on the track going. It's time for the Street Creeper. Street Creeper actually knocks the shell off of Cloak and Dagger. So just like the Bishop, that car car also apparently has a removable top, but it hasn't come off until now, so we didn't know. And now it's time for the Ubi double trailer. Oh boy, this is gonna be big. Oh my goodness, look at that. The Street Creeper is tossed, just smacked multiple times, flips around and around and around, and slides over upside down. And look at that! Cloak and Dagger actually writes his own teammate, and now they're both right side up. What very well could have been the end for that team ends up being survival for the Caped Cruisers. They are gonna go into this next round looking good. Joust and Jalopy's still got the Woody. Massive Transit only has two now, and the Webmasters are down to one. This is gonna put Massive Transit up to 15 points, followed by Caped Cruisers at 13, and the Webmasters are ahead of Justin Jalopy's by three points. Caped Cruisers are gonna hit the road first, followed by Massive Transit in round four, starting with the Bishop. Let's see if he loses his shell again. And yep, he sure does. Even off the back of Evil Weevil, he loses that shell. Not getting a whole lot of height on that one. I'm thinking probably just a two, maybe a three, but I don't think so. And now it's time for the Ubi double trailer. I think Massive Transit might be trying to take out the Bishop right here, and they are not able to do it. He flies off the back of the Bishop and goes smack up into the crates, lands back on the track. He's sideways, bounced pretty precariously right now. Man, that was a big hit. Final car for the Webmasters here. They've gotta be careful. Oh, they were not careful. They hit the back of the Bishop, popped up a little bit, and then flopped upside down. It was that little pop at the end that subverted the spider's normal agility, and he just went straight upside down. I don't know if he's gonna be able to recover from that. Let's see what happens when the Woody goes down. And the wagon props himself lopsidedly on the back of the bishop. It looks like they got that bumper back on there. I'm not sure it's really gonna do much for protection. In fact, I have a feeling that Cloak and Dagger is probably just gonna knock it off again. And Cloak and Dagger does exactly that. That bumper is just smashed off the back of that car. I don't think they're gonna be able to get that back on there permanently. And now what we have right here is one of the most precarious endings I've seen to any match. We are down to the last car. And if the Jalopy gets knocked out, their team is done. The Spiders are probably already done. And if Massive Transit loses the Escalade, they might have a problem. There's a chance that we're gonna lose multiple teams just in this one hit. Let's see what happens. The Escalade clobbers everyone down at the end of the track, but then goes sideways himself. But somehow he actually righted his own teammate, the UBE double trailer. So they're gonna stay in the match. And then slowly but surely the Woody Wagon comes back down right side up. And yet somehow both of the caped cruisers survived unscathed. That was insane. There's a bumper lying on the field. There's broken pieces from a lot of these jalopies. They were torn apart during this, but they survived by the skin of their teeth. Massive transit, jousting jalopies, and the caped cruisers all survived and are moving on. Cape Cruisers got 21 points. They actually passed Massive Transit. So they're gonna get that first place spot, which will give them a better rank later on. And Massive Transit has 19, Justin Jalopy's with 11. That match really came down to the wire, but we've got three teams that are gonna join the esteemed company of nine other teams who are qualified for the Junkyard Joust main event. We've got five of these qualifiers left. I hope you'll join us for all of them. And please consider becoming a patron of Junkyard Joust. I am trying to hire an editor to help me put these episodes out faster and more often. And if you become a patron, that is gonna help me achieve that goal and get more videos out for you to watch every week. Thanks for watching everybody and have a good night.